Hey guys, we're back with Maniac McGee Chapter 22. If you were the baby buffalo at the Elmwood Park Zoo, maybe it would have gone something like this. You wake up, you have breakfast, compliments of mother's milk, you mosey on over to the lean-to. Surprise! A strange new animal in there. Bigger than you, but a lot smaller than mom. Hair, but only on the top of his head. Sitting in the straw, munching on a carrot like mom does. Every morning, same thing. You get to expect it. Some mornings, you forget mom's milk and head right on over to the lean-to. The creature offers you a carrot, but all you know how to deal with is milk. You nuzzle the new, funny-smelling, hairy-headed animal. It nuzzles you back. Mom doesn't seem to mind. After the nuzzling, the stranger climbs over the fence and goes away, not to return until that night. Only one morning, the stranger falls from the fence and lies on the ground on the other side. It doesn't move. You try to poke your nose through the chain links, but you can't reach. You can only watch, only watch. The old man was bumping through the zoo in the park pickup when he spotted the body clumped outside the buffalo pen. He wheeled over, got out, a kid. At first, he could only stare at the body and then the baby bison, whose large brown eyes seemed to be watching them both. The mother came lumbering over, nodding, as if to confirm, a kid. The kid looked terrible. His clothes were scraps, rags. Wherever his body showed through, it was bony and dirty and scratched. The two bison, staring, staring, seemed to say, well, do something. The old man gathered his own bones and muscles as best he could and managed to hoist the kid <clears throat> and get him into the pickup. He laid him on the seat, bent his legs so he could close the door. He knew he should take the kid straight to the hospital or a doctor, someplace official, someplace right. But the pickup just sort of steered itself back to the band shell, and there he was lugging the kid into the baseball equipment room. The season was over by now, but the army green burlap bag still stood ready for the next ump to call play ball. He yanked out a couple of chest protectors and laid the kid down, careful with his head. At least he was breathing. Though it wasn't cold, it seemed as if the kid ought to be covered, so the old man took his winter work jacket off the hook and laid that over him. Then he waited and watched. With trembling, dusty fingers, he touched the kid's limp, scrawny hand. He had never held, never really touched a kid's hand before. Hey. The kid's voice was barely a squeak, but it threw him back. He dropped the hand. Where am I? The old man cleared his throat. <clears> throat. The band shell. The band shell. In the back. Equipment room. The kid's eyes squinted, blinked. And you? What about me? Who are you? Grayson. Grayson, do I know you? He got up. Guess you do now. He went to his hot plate, heated up some water, and made some chicken noodle cup of soup. He gave it to the kid who was sitting up now. You want a spoon? It looked as though he could hardly lift the cup. He held it with both hands and gulped it down. Huh? He said. Never mind. You still hungry? The kid flopped back down. A little. Wait here, said Grayson, and left. Ten minutes later, he was back with a zip, a large. It took the kid less, less time to polish it off than it had taken Grayson to get it. He told the kid not to eat so fast he'd get sick. The kid nodded. Grayson said, where'd you get them scratches? Oh, some picker bush. What were you doing there? Hiding. Hiding from who? Some kids. Where? The kid pointed. Somewhere out there. Some other town. He crossed his legs Indian style on the chest protector. Can I ask you a favor? Shoot. Can we go somewhere and get some butterscotch crimpets? Grayson squawked. Crimpets? You still hungry? For them, I am. Grayson threw the greasy zip wrapper into the wastebasket. I don't know. Maybe you ought to do something for me first. Like what? Like, tell me your name. It's Jeffrey McGee. And where do you live? Well, I did live on Sycamore Street, 728. Did? I guess I don't anymore. The old man stared. You said Sycamore? Yep. Ain't that the East End? Yep. 
With his fingernail, he scraped a path of dirt off the kid's forearm. He stared at it. What are you doing? The kid asked. Seeing if you was white under there. Neither spoke for a while. At last, the kid said, anything else you want from me? The old man shrugged. Guess not. Ah, come on. Don't stop asking. I'm asked out. How about the zoo, huh? Don't you want to know what I was doing at the zoo at the buffalo pen? The old man sighed. <sighs> okay, what? I was living there. With the buffaloes? Yep, with the buffaloes. You like buffaloes? It was dark when I got there. I thought it was a, a deer pen. They switched the deer and the buffalo around last month. Okay with me. I got along better with the buffaloes anyway. Well, I'll tell you one thing, the old man sniffed. You sure do smell like one. The kid laughed. They both laughed. When they finally calmed down, the kid said, any chance of those crimpins now? Grayson reached for the pickup keys. Let's go.